but today with me is a very familiar face. Who am I? What's my purpose? What am I doing? Where am I headed? So what are the attributes of a good disciple? You want to become like your leader. We don't want to become a carbon copy. Jesus not only called them, right, but he allowed them to walk with them and to observe what he was doing. A lot of the issues in friendship groups of friends is not even due to the supernatural or the spiritual, it's because the practical is not thought of. So we really want to not get frustrated with people in the short term. We really want to see a lifetime thing with them. So if you are worthy for the cross, if you are worthy for forgiveness, we are worthy for discipleship as well. Just get in touch with one of the pastors and leaders and we are available to serve you and be with you. Blessed day to you all. Welcome to another segment of Trends and Truth. Today we thought we'd discuss on a topic where learning and growing in God and scripture has become a part of our church lifestyle. Today we will understand a little bit more about the programs that we have at Bethany to help individuals grow and reach their potential in Christ. As you mostly know that there are two programs that we run at Bethany Church. One which is called the Discipleship Program, the Friendship Group we call it, and also the Seven Seas it's called. And also we have another program that is called the Alpha Program. And today with me is a very familiar face, a pastor loved by all of us, who is here to explain and clarify about the importance of this program and how it can be a great impact over every person's life. Let me warmly welcome Pastor David. Show. Hi, Pastor David. Hi, Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pastor David, let us get right to the topic. So, can you tell us the difference between who is a disciple, who is a friend, and what is this program that we are running and what is going on in church? Sure, would love to. Uh, I think it's an important topic. Uh, so, let's start with the term disciple. The disciple term uh, basically means someone who learns under a leader and contributes to the leader's work and becomes like the leader. Uh, so it has the connotation of a student, someone who learns, someone who's going on a journey. But and we see in the life of Jesus also, he modeled this, right? He had disciples very famously, uh, Peter or John or whoever, right? So if you look at what they did, they followed him, they spent time with him, they learned from him, and they become like him, right? So disciples. But in the course of his ministry, Jesus, uh, Jesus makes a very important transition. In John 15, he says to his disciples, "No longer do I call you servants, but I call you friends." So we understand that discipleship is great, but a deeper level of discipleship is friendship, true friendship, right? Where life is actually being exchanged, uh, and not only in terms of the temporal, whether it's eating or you know spending time, but actually at a deeper level where there's transformation taking place, where I am becoming like Jesus. So that's what in Bethany we don't really use the term disciple; uh, we use the term friend, right? And you can be a discipler, that's someone who's discipling, leading, helping someone, or a disciple who is learning under someone, becoming like someone. And we can all agree that we are called to play both roles, right? We are called to be a disciple and a disciple, but at Bethany we use the term friend, right? Whether I'm leading someone, I try to be a good friend to them. When I'm learning from someone, right, helping them, I try to be a good friend as well. Uh, in church, we have, like Manji said, two very special programs. One is Alpha, and the other one is the 7 C uh, Friendship Model. The Alpha program is actually world famous for some of you who are watching, who have been part of the church also sometimes. It's to deal with life's big questions, right? And if you're someone who has no uh, background to church and no uh, experience with God or no experience with even the supernatural, right? But you have deep questions about who am I? What's my purpose? What am I doing? Where am I headed, right? And if you have these deep questions, if you want to explore this in a very friendly, uh, fun atmosphere, uh, the Alpha, Alpha program is one for you. We typically, we meet at someone's house, uh, exchange some food and basically discussing questions and really exploring it. So if you're someone who is struggling or grappling with these questions, highly encourage you to take part in one of our alpha programs. Uh, the 7 C friendship model is at a deeper level where you have an idea of uh, who God is and you have an idea of let's say uh, 
the purpose of life and everything. And even if you don't, it's okay. You're, you can still be part of it. It's once again uh, come specifically under a friend and we exchange life with that person and grow more. So the seven C model is really focused on growth. The first one is really exploring and trying to understand certain things. The seven C model is really uh, making a friend and really growing and becoming like Jesus. Wonderful. So David. If we'll say there is a person watching today and they would love to be a part of a friendship group and be discipled and taught on how to learn scripture and understand the seven C's. However, they are not sure whether they are really suitable for this role to learn and be a disciple. So what are the attributes of a good disciple? Well, great question, right? Uh, and once again, if you're with the Alpha program, anyone is welcome to, right? And even with the seven C program, Anyone is welcome to. We highly encourage you to talk with the pastor, talk with the leader in church and uh, be a part of it. But uh, I think your question really alludes to more of a, a deeper level. Let's say someone who is not at the exploratory phase, someone who is not at the beginning phase, and maybe there are, but really someone who is focused on growing, right? I want to go to the next level, I want to become more like Jesus, I want to become more effective as a disciple. So, and it's important for all of us because all of us, regardless of our position in church, right, whether we are a pastor or leader, all of us are at the end of the day a disciple, right? We are someone's disciple, right? Primarily, all of us are the disciples of Jesus, but at an earth level, we are also under a leader. So, it is a great question for all of us to uh, begin to, let's say, understand. I would say the attributes of a great friend, a disciple, uh, three things, right? And obviously, there are the usual ones which are faith and prayer and, you know, all, the, all those is true. But I would say these three things. One is that you prioritize the vision of Christ and the leader's vision. The second one is that you contribute and work towards the leader's vision. And the third one is that you become like the leader. Right? So let's break these three things down. Now all of us, every church, every pastor and all of us, we are primarily a disciple of Jesus and that's his vision is our vision. Right? Every church, that's our vision. But we understand that the kingdom of God is so huge, right, and so big, and different people are called for different things. Now, for example, in this season, Manju, if God has called me to serve under you, and God has placed in your heart to really impact the nations uh, through media, right? So, in this season, I need to prioritize your vision, right? And that's an attribute of a great disciple. Now, there are so many things in church that I can be part of or in the kingdom. I can go on missions. I can be part of Sunday school ministry, I can be part of worship, right? And all of those is good. But if you are a friend, a disciple, your priority should be your leader's vision, right? So in this season, if I'm serving under you, that should become my mission. Not Sunday school or not revive or not anything else but this. And just an example, I'm not saying that we can't serve in different areas, we can. But if you really look at the life of Jesus' friends, his disciples, right? There were just so many things that they could do in that season, right? And we know in the life of Jesus, there are many poor people who came to him, sick people who came to him. One day, what if John or Peter said, you know, Jesus, I'm going to go and start uh, a social work ministry, right? Because there's so much in the world that, you know, we need to deal with. But no, they prioritized their leader's vision. They went with Jesus, they served under Jesus. The second thing is, you want to work and contribute towards your leader's vision, right? Okay, so now I'm coming under a leader, I'm understanding the vision, and I want to be part of the vision. But what that really demonstrated is through my actions, right? So, for example, back to this example, if God has called you to do lead a big media ministry and really touch the young people and so, and I'm serving under you, I need to work towards that. And a lot of the time in church, uh, we see people who come to church, right, want to be discipled, want to be part of a friendship group, but they don't really serve. They don't really help for the vision, mm -hmm. right? So, prioritize the leader's vision, help and contribute towards the leader's vision. And the last one is, you want to become like your leader. And why that what we are saying is we don't want to become a carbon copy. Now, for example, your beautiful daughter, Arya, right? Uh, God has fearfully and wonderfully made her, right? And she has her own purpose and her own unique destiny in God, right? And I'm sure you and Jesh don't want her to be a carbon copy of you. But you, both of you, I'm sure, want her to carry an essence of who you are, your core values, your core characters, your core vision and stuff like that, right? And she will carry that because she's your daughter. So it's the same thing, right? In our lives, uh, we don't want to necessarily become a carbon copy of our leader, right? Because all of us are fearfully and wonderfully men. But our leader's core values, their core ways of doing it, their essence of who they are, we need to capture and we need to begin to live that out. And if you see in the lives of uh, Jesus' friends, Jesus' friends, they kind of became that. They became like the leader. And Paul famously said, imitate me for I imitate Christ. Now, did he say that 
replicate me? No, he said imitate me, right? So these are the three attributes of, I would say of a great disciple. Prioritize the leader's vision, work towards the leader's vision, and become like the leader in essence. Amen. Uh, David, I would like to ask a bit of a controversial question. Um, how are these disciples selected? Is it only people that we are close to or that we like that are picked out by us to be disciple or a friendship group with? Or is everyone given the opportunity? Or is it only certain people that we see have certain characteristics or um, uh, they are able to achieve bigger things? So are these only these people who are selected to be a part of discipleship group? A great question, right? And first of all, if you put it the other way, a lot of people come to church and a different uh, area they struggle with is, I'm not worthy enough. Right? I just want to say to all, our, all the viewers, everyone is worthy. Right? We are worthy not because of anything in our lives, because Christ has made us worthy. So if you are worthy for the cross, if you are worthy for forgiveness, we are worthy for discipleship as well. Right? And God has preordained leaders in your life who can disciple you. Uh, but flipping the question from, let's say, as a friend's perspective, right? I am beginning to start, let's say, have a few friends, I want to begin to lead. How do we actually select people? Well, let's go back and see how Jesus selected friends. Right? Uh, he went and selected fishermen. He selected tax collectors, right? It's very interesting that he didn't select uh, rabbis, he didn't select, or at least at the outset, at least in a big number, uh, people who are on the religious uh, framework, people who are very skilled and, you know, fashionable and so on. And that doesn't mean that Jesus was discriminating. But I think essentially you want to select people who are available, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes there's a difference between anointed people and available people. You can be anointed, but you might not be available for God's work, right? And sometimes you might be gifted and not available for God's work. Sometimes you might be talented and not available for God's work. So personally in my life, uh, how I select uh, my friends is I want to see who's available to be my friend, who wants to partner with me, who wants to contribute to the work of God, and who wants to go on this journey with me. And sometimes you can... The available person can be anointed. I'm not saying both of those things can be true, but uh, sometimes when we begin to start, let's say I want to make some friends, I want to start a team, I want to invest in people, we automatically go looking for anointed people. And sometimes the anointed people really don't want to uh, be in these things, right? So uh, make that distinction. It's great if they're anointed and gifted and talented and all of those things, and they're knowledgeable, they know the word of God, right? All of those things, but primarily you want to see who is available to be a friend? Who is available to serve in the kingdom? Who is available to really go on this journey? So that's the primary thing that I would say. And it's great. And I hope if you're watching today and you consider to be a part of Friendship Group, today will be an encouraging day for you to take this stand. Because it is available for anyone who is available and who has the time and the heart to learn. There are many teachers available to teach you and be with you and coach you through the whole process. Pastor David, how is it that we are able to disciple effectively. What are the key elements in our personality or in our teachings that we should have in order to disciple another person effectively? Great question. Um, let's, let's look at the life of Jesus once again. Um, he basically went to Peter, right? And he went to Peter when he was in Peter's, uh, let's say, his area, in his work, right? In, right? Uh, he didn't ask Peter to come to him, right? So in that one of the things that we understand is Jesus went to where his friend was. He understood that world. Uh, so one of the things that I would like to say to the le leaders, anyone who wants to uh, lead and is leading other friends, uh, you want to really understand where your friend is, right? And as you know, those of you are in Bethany who are watching this, in Bethany we have networks, right? And based on your gender, your age, you might be separated with different, whether it's a man or a woman or Sunday school or teen or married or whoever, right? Uh, and most of us who are in the similar age group, similar gender, will have a specific way of looking at life and going through life. But the challenge becomes for leaders when you disciple outside of your network, outside of your gender, outside of your social status sometimes, outside of your, uh, let's say, your age group, right? Uh, I was the other day looking at a senior citizen, let's put it that way, discipling a teenager, right? And I, I was not sure if that was the most effective way uh, they were going about it because it seems like a full-on lecture to a teenager. And maybe it was, who knows, right? Um, so, so sometimes we need to understand that how you disciple a baby boomer is not how you disciple a millennial, right? Understand that. Now, for example, in where I serve primarily in Revive, it's okay for me to, let's say, call one of, my, one of the guys in Revive and say, okay, you know what, my mom and my wife have gone 
come to my place let's watch some sports let's talk about god right we are alone we have the whole place to ourselves you can in peace talk about god that's okay right but i probably shouldn't do that with a girl in drag even though my intentions are correct right so you understand where when we uh, disciple make friends we are understand where is the friend right um, for example let's say you want to meet with someone very affluent in our church and you say you know let's meet at cinnamon grand coffee stop and it's okay right but let's say someone who is not so affluent should you actually be making that invite right that's going to make them kind of you know so on the practical level you understand your gender your age group where they are in life really really matters and sometimes a uh, lot of the issues in friendship groups of friends is not even due to the supernatural or the spiritual it's because the practical is not thought out right so that's the first thing the second thing is uh, jesus cast vision right and people want to follow people who are in one sense better than who been on a journey before who know something about it, right and jesus and and they also want to know if they follow and if they commit to this friend they also can improve and go on a journey right so the vision that you cast must be bigger then just let's come let's have a drink right it has to be bigger than that jesus said come follow me and i will make you fishers of men so he was casting vision so when you meet with a friend right when you you always want to ensure that you cast vision right and and let's put it in simple language you want to say look we're going to meet together we're going to study the scripture we're going to grow over a period of time i'm going to go and you're going to grow we're going to go become like this and that's vision right there so they seeing there's purpose behind them investing time right and obviously the other thing is you want to model life Jesus not only called them right but he allowed them to walk with them and to observe what he was doing right he modeled life and he demonstrated it so those things and the last thing i would say is to be if, to make effective friends be consistent mm-hmm. right no one wants to attend a bible study let's say last year and for the rest of the year there's no contact from the lead or very little input and let's say you're praying for your friends like god doesn't want you and i to pray only for one week right he wants us to be consistent whatever you do with your friend be consistent so understanding where the friend is casting vision right and being consistent but david as you disciple or have friendship groups with other people i'm sure there have been many victories good stories and testimonies that you've been able to share but also i'm sure there have been certain disciples or friends that you have worked with who have been rather challenging and difficult for you to um coach through and help through in occasions like this what is your advice what is your take Great question. Um, I think I, I, I certainly can't, I won't speak for you, but I think my personal opinion is that every one of us has been that person. At some point, to some friend, to some leader, we've been that person. We've been that challenging, difficult person, right? And the older we become or the more we grow, uh, we understand that everyone has a season. Everyone has seasons. Life is lived in seasons. and there are seasons of excellence and there are seasons of let's say inconsistency and all of us have and the lord is helping us go through it but as a leader it's important to know and first of all be aware that these seasons will come in your disciple in your friend's life right it's not a question of uh, if it's a question of when so when this happens one of the things that you want to do is never to uh, judge the friend never to uh, give a hard time to the friend right you want to give a lot of grace right and obviously i'm not excluding correction right but grace is always there with god right with all of our mistakes even with in his correction thing it's there so in the same thing we want to give grace to people and sometimes we want to give some space mm-hmm. right so it's a very 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 intense world and sometimes the church world is also intense and so sometimes people just want a little bit of space so in the season where you need to refrain if you go head on you might burn that relationship So sometimes giving a little bit of space is great and that space might be the time when they are using to heal and they will come back stronger another thing that you you and I should do as we handle challenging disciples is to understand that what is challenging for them right when we say challenging are they being challenged in ministry right maybe for example i know that you have a great personality you talk well and all of those things right so for you this is natural but maybe let's say we uh, making an assumption right we take you and put you in the church accounts team right and maybe you might excel there but that might be challenge so in that season i might see few areas where you're dropping the ball right so i need to come and have the conversation be a good friend ask okay what is challenging for you sometimes the person is not being challenged is it's not challenging the season is challenging for example when my dad died uh, it was a very challenging season for me to come to church to uh, take part in stuff so my leadership they actually gave me grace 
right? They allow me to take a back step. So understanding those things, and the most important thing is to understand that discipleship friendship is a lifetime thing, right? And we want to uh, let's say take someone, and in one, two, three months, six months, we want them to be like the Apostle Paul, right? And in three, six months, I don't know about you, but I definitely didn't become the Apostle Paul or anyone else, right? I'm still a work in progress. So we really want to not get frustrated with people in the short term. We really want to see a lifetime thing with them, right? Now that doesn't mean that my friend and I, or your friend and I, whoever, might be in the same place, serve in the same place uh, for a lifetime, maybe, right? But generally, the relationship is a lifetime relationship. So sign up. If they are struggling in a season, if they are being difficult in a season, it's okay, right? If we are consistent, if we pray, and if we encourage, and if we are good friend to them, with God's help, they will turn around. Amen and amen. Personally for me, uh, being a part of a friendship group has made a tremendous impact in my life and helped me grow. For you, I believe it has been the same for you. You've also been a part of a friendship group personally and you've grown and then decided to start teaching another. So would you mind sharing each of those things, a few benefits of being a part of choosing to be a part of a group like this and uh, encourage our viewers to actually take that step. Definitely. I, I can definitely say that I am here today and uh, doing things in my life and a lot of it is due to the friends in my life, good godly friends who really helped me, who really encouraged me, even the seasons that I've been, uh, I've dropped the ball or whatever, really come together and really encouraged me. So I cannot, uh, I haven't done, I couldn't have done life without them effectively and even today I can definitely say that I cannot do the life that I'm doing effectively if it weren't for my uh, friends. So I've been a big uh, beneficiary of that highly encourage you to take part in friendship groups to meet some friends and to make some friends thank you pastor david for all the insight the clear very clarified answers as always you've been such a blessing to all of us thank you viewers for watching today we hope that through today's segment you have been encouraged to be a part of a friendship group the seven seas program is absolutely amazing it has taught all of us much and we encourage you to speak to your group leaders and join in. Bethany is a safe space welcoming every single person. So even if you are not a part of the church, but yet like to be a part of one of these programs, just get in touch with one of the pastors and leaders and we are available to serve you and be with you. And may you have a blessed and beautiful week. God bless you all.